Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 2300 that says successful pairs of spells and potions. So here guys, you are given two different integer array spells and potions uh, and the spells of I as well as the potion of J both represent the strength, its strength. Okay. Now further you are given one success variable and this success is defined as the product of the strength, uh, product of the strength of the spell as well as the potion, right? And if the product is greater than or equal to success, then we can consider it as a successful product. Now you want to, uh, you are asked to return one integer array pairs. So these pairs would be the same as the length of the this spells array. And for each spell, what you need to check, you need to check that how many successful pairs does each spell will make with the potions. That means let's say here the spell of five is five. So if you multiply five with one, five with two, three, four, and five. So if you multiply 5 with all the uh, portions, then how many of them would be successful pairs? So as you guys can see that here there are 4 successful pairs because these 4 values are greater than or equal to 7. So we appended 4 to our answer. Got this? That's what we are doing. We are simply checking that for each spell of 5, how many successful pairs it will make with the portions. Got it? So if you take a look at this 1, so 1 won't be able to make any successful pairs. As you can see, after multiplication also, there is no uh, result uh, whose, uh, which is greater than or equal to 7. So yeah, we appended 0 to our answer. Got it? Now for 3, as you guys can see that 9, 12 and 15 are greater than or equal to 7. So yeah, we have 3 successful pairs and that's why we added 3 to our answer. So for each spell, we have to check uh, how many pairs, successful pairs it makes with the position. Right? And based on that, the number of successful pairs it produced, we add to our answer, to our output. Got this? Now, here, the spell is 312, portion is 858. Now, if you multiply 3 with 858, you will get this result. So, 2 successful pairs, 0, it will yield, um, uh, this one, it will yield the same 858. So, it's 0 successful pairs and 2, we will get 16 2 times. So, yeah, again, 2 uh, successful pairs. So yeah, I hope you guys understood the question till now that what we are trying to do. So if you try to do a brute force approach, so let me discuss the brute force approach first. So let's say if you have a spell something like this. Uh, let me take its 1, 5, 7 and position something like this. 3, 6, 2, 1. Okay. And let me take... Uh, success is equal to uh, let me take it as 10 okay so if you try to do a brute force approach then uh, then what would uh, be its time complexity see this is the length of this is m and and the length of this portion is m and both n comma m uh, can be less than equal to what see that constant here is they are less than equal to 10 to the power 5 both can be 10 to the power 5 so if you try to do brute force approach now what is brute force so for brute force approaches uh, you write two for loop let's say for int i equals to zero up till i is less than n so for each spell of i you check for int j equal to zero up till j is less than m you check that um, uh, you check that spell spell of i into uh, position of j is greater than or equal to success If this is the case, then uh, count plus plus. If you're doing something like this, then the overall time complexity would be what? We go of n into m, right? This would be the time complexity because this above for loop will run up till n and this below for loop uh, will run up till m, okay? And now what can be the n? n is 10 to the power 5 and m can be also 10 to the power 5 at max. So, uh, yeah. So, guys, uh, this would be equal to what? This would be equal to? Uh, 10 to the power 10 and since this is greater than or equal to 10 to the power 9 so it will surely give you time limit exceeded error correct so if you try to do a brute force solution like this by using two for loops then it won't work got it now so guys uh, see uh, since what we want we want pairs pairs item right and the size of this pairs item would be what it would be n that is the size of spell item and also we want to check how many successful pairs are present for each spell of i and how we can do that see this for loop is prominent 
we, we would require this above for loop because for each spell of five we need to check so this for loop is a must right so so this for loop for int i equals to zero up till i is less than n this for loop is a must now but between these inside this what we were using we were using to do we were running the for loop of big o of m inside this we were running the for loop of big o of m and that we, we need to reduce so the inner calculation time complexity we need to reduce got this because we, we cannot reduce this time complexity big o of n is prominent but inside this we need to reduce of whatever we are doing so inside this initial code what it was doing it were taking big o of m time complexity and if you want something better than big o of m what it can be either it can be big o of log of m of either it can be big of one correct it can be anything between uh, like this be either big of log of m or big of one now uh, this is better time complexity better than uh, big of m so these two are better time complexity now guys what if i tell you that uh, you can uh, what you can do is see if you are given something like this three six two one say if portion is something like this three six two one okay then let's say spell assume that spell of i at a particular index spell of i is let's say five and let's say success uh, success is what let's say success is 10 okay now if you multiply five with all this position position then what you will get your answer you will get 15 13 10 and 5 got this this type of multiplication array you will get uh, means this type of product you will get after doing multiplication now uh, what if uh, you sort this you sort this then it will become one two three and six okay you sorted this now what uh, what you can check is uh, whether uh, if you means we just need how many successful pairs are there now if a successful pair is present it will is possible at this index index zero one two and three if successful pair is possible at index 2 then it will be definitely possible at index 3 because it is because we have sorted right this is what sorted so that means if uh, success possible at index index 3 uh, index sorry index 2 then it would is definitely possible uh, at index three it is sure means if it is uh, if you get successful pair at index two then it is it is definitely possible to get successful pair at index three got this so similarly what we would do is uh, we uh, so here what we are doing we are trying to find how many successful pairs are there so what you can do is see mm. so you can do a binary search right how you get the intuition like this so in binary search what we do uh, if you get a one successful answer, let's say one, two, three, and six at index zero, one, two, three. So if you get a successful answer at, zero, at index two, then we won't check towards the right. We will only check towards the left. Correct? Simple it is. See, if you get a successful index, successful pair at index two, then you will definitely get that in, in index three. So there is no need to check towards the right. We will check towards the left. And that type of similar thing is done in the binary search. Got this? Also, the another way you can think of binary search is the time complexity of binary search would be big O of log of m. Okay, so this is uh, uh, this is our target time complexity, right? So if you use big O of log of m time complexity solution algorithm, so that is only one algorithm like this binary search. So other way to also point towards the binary search, and this way also that uh, similarly if you get if you are one two three and six if you are at index zero, at it index zero. Uh, so uh, if index 0 1 2 and 3 so this is thing so if you are at index 1 so if success not possible at index 1 then uh, it is also not possible at lower index got it if the success is not possible at the index one then it would be definitely not possible at index zero so lower index it is not possible so based on these two thing that what we will do we will make jumps right if you have index like this zero one two three index like this so let's say if your initial index is this it is possible then you make this jump to this index then you make uh, some jump to this index so this is how you will make jumps 
right you won't check for all you won't check for all if you check for all then it would be big of him but you make jumps right then that's why only uh, your time complexity would be reduced to big of log of m and this is done efficiently by binary search got this so yeah guys here we would use binary search up approach to solve this inner for loop and for the binary search approach that you also might know that we would have to first sort sort the position atom sort the position atom and then apply binary search so the intuition of why to use binary search is now clear if you don't use binary search and to do a brute force approach then you will get tle so you need to reduce the time complexity of the inner for loop the above for loop this above for loop you cannot reduce its time complexity you have to check for each spells so yeah we we cannot do that so we need to do something optimization for the inner for loop only now the optimization can be reducing the time complexity of big o of m to big o of log of m or either to big o of 1 but uh, the big o of 1 is not feasible right uh, intuitively you won't uh, think anything to solve in big o of 1 so yeah you move towards the big o of m now the only uh, algorithm that solves in big o of m is binary search another way is you can think that instead of checking for all the elements we can make some jumps like this if uh, let's say if the if you get success at index 2 index 2 then it you, you will surely get a success at in index 3 and if you get failure at index 1 then there is no need to check for index 0 or lower index so yeah, based on these things we come to a conclusion that uh, applying binary search will work here now guys let's move on to the coding part where we will see this thing in a detail so guys here as i told you first that we sorted the position atom so uh, uh, because in binary search will works only in sorted atom and for that to work we sorted this position atom uh, and then we run a loop for uh, this all the spells plus for the spells dot size and inside there that we run a one binary search so low is 0 high is up till the last index and success start index uh, is one index that we created okay and we initialize uh, up for the position dot size now here inside this is a typical uh, while loop of a binary search while low is less than equal to high we first calculated the mean and the current answer so what is this current current is nothing but a current uh, uh, current pair Uh, with a spell of phi and the position of mid, right? This is the current answer. Now, if the current answer is greater than equal to success, that means we don't have to move move towards the axis. If there are indices like this, so these are the indices, right? What is mid? Mid is nothing but an index. Low and high both are index as well as mid is also the index. So if you get a success at this position, let's say this is the mid, and if current current is greater than equal to success at this mid position, using this mid right then we don't have to check this not to check and we have to move towards the left right and so that's why we what we did we uh, so this was the low pointer and this was the high pointer so we reduce the high to mid minus 1 so now high will become index 3 got it this would be your new high and that's why we move towards the left and if this is not possible if you get a failure then we move towards the right this is how binary search works got it and yeah at the end we simply push back the answer See the size of the position minus the starting of the successful index. Success starts index. Okay, so we, so let's say if you have something like this, and let's say the three is the starting index of your success. So how many pairs are possible from three to seven pairs are possible, and that is what that is nothing but eight minus three that is five. Got it? This is the five different pairs would be possible. So that five we are uh, we are adding to our answer vector. Got it. So yeah, this is for the coding part. Coding part is very much simple here. So yeah, that's all for this video. Okay, now talking about the time complexity. So guys, uh, let me explain you that also. See, we are so uh, so. Let's say the size of the spells is m and size of the position atom is m. Okay. So we are sorting the position atom. So the sorting will take m log of m, and that inner and the for loop will take n into log of m. Right. This binary search will work for log of m. and we are doing that for all n so that's why uh, this is this would be n into log of m now combining this what you would get n plus m you take it as common and here you will get log of m so this is the new time complexity for the solution okay so if you in the worst case if this is be 10 to the power 5 this would be also 10 to the power 5 then you get time complexity of 2 into 10 to the power 5 into log of 10 to the power 5 Okay, this would be the time complexity, and here you won't get 
any time limit exceeded error got this and now for the space complexity and the space complexity here would be big o of log of m see guys is though we are using this answer variable vector this is vector of size and but we won't consider this into our space complexity because we have to return this right we have to already return this vector int so this won't be considered in calculating our space complexity the only space complexity would be used while we are doing sorting so this inner sort will use some space complexity of log of m uh, right so this would be that would be the only space complexity here so yeah guys that's all for this video if you guys have any doubts then do let me in the comment section make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you